What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another video dealing with factoring difference of squares. So we gotta factor each of these expressions over here. So remember, a difference of squares, to bring back that formula we've used before, it's basically a squared minus b squared. If you have an expression like this, that's gonna factor into a minus b, a plus b. All right, so I went over that in the overview video before. Uh, further up in the chapter, hopefully you're watching this on the website. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the website. There's a link in the description box and the videos there are in order and make sure you're watching in order because there's a lot of carryover as the videos go on. So in that overview video, we went over this formula here. And so that's the formula that we're gonna be using to factor these difference of squares. So let's start off with x squared minus 25. And so what we want to do is we want to try to take this and rewrite it in this format. Now notice the x squared, it's already in that a squared format. So we got x squared minus, but then this 25, notice it's not in the b squared format, but we could rewrite this 25 as 5 squared like that. And then notice it is in that format. So notice that the a value is x, the b value is five, right? The a value is x, the b value is five. And then we just have to take these values of x and five and plug them in to this result. So a, which is x, we'll have x minus five, and then we'll have x plus five, like that. So that ends up being the final answer for part A. You could check your answer by factoring. Actually, one thing that I forgot to mention uh, that you always wanna check for at the beginning of any factoring is taking out greatest common factors, okay? But from x squared minus 25, couldn't take anything out initially, right? But there may be expressions, I think in part D, we're gonna be able to take out, notice a two. Okay, but we'll get there. So let's, uh, let's do the next one. We got x squared minus 81. So let's rewrite this in this format. We got x squared minus, and then the 81 we can rewrite as nine squared. So notice that the a value is x, the b value is nine. Plugging it in here, we'd end up with x minus nine, x plus nine like that. So this factors into those two brackets. Uh, next one, we have the 4x squared minus 49. So notice that this 4x squared here, even though there's a square here, it's not in this format because we have to have an expression, the entire expression squared. Notice here only the x is squared, but this 4 is not squared. But we can rewrite this here as 2x squared, right? Because whenever you have two things that are multiplying, just in general, a review of exponential rules, if you got two things that are multiplying, you got an exponent, then both things go to that exponent. So you'd have two to the power of two, which is four, and then you'd have x to the power of two, which is just x squared. So you'd end up with that right there. So you'd end up with two x squared minus, and then the 49, we can rewrite as seven squared, like that. So notice the a value is 2x, the b value is 7, so we'd end up with 2x minus 7, 2x plus 7, like that. All right, so that's what it factors to. Um, 2x minus 7, 2x plus 7. And then remember, the whole time we're checking, can we take out any greatest common factors from these two? We weren't able to take out anything initially. But now with part D, notice that initially what we can do is we could take out a two from the 18 and the 50. So we could take out a two over here, we'd end up with nine X squared minus 25 like that. And then what we wanna do, we wanna take this bracket, see if it could factor further. And it will factor further. It's gonna be a difference of squares, All right? And we're gonna do, 
These are fairly simple examples, but in the next few videos, we're going to be doing more complex examples where that greatest common factor we take out at the beginning is going to be more complex. Sometimes it's going to be numbers. Sometimes it's going to be a mix of variables and numbers. Okay, but in this particular video, this is the only expression where we're going to take something out initially. So then what we can do is we could work with that bracket alone. And again, we want to take this, write it in this format. So the 9x squared, again, only the x is squared here, but we need something in brackets squared, right, to match this a squared. So that would be 3x squared minus the 25, that would be 5 squared. And so we'd end up with 3x squared minus 5 squared like that. So the a value is 3x in this case, the b value is 5. And then just plugging those into the formula, we end up with 3x minus 5, 3x plus 5. Now remember though, that those two brackets is that bracket factor. But in the main overall work, we still have that 2 in front. So we would write 2 and then bracket 3x minus 5, 3x plus 5, like that. Okay, so that's part D. And then we have um, part E, 36x squared minus 1. So a lot of times you'll see just the 1 like that, and that can be part of a difference of squares because the 1 we could rewrite as 1 squared. So we could take this and rewrite it as 6x squared minus 1 squared, right? 1 squared is the same as 1. So whenever you see a 1, you could always write it as this, and then you're able to get it in that same format. So the a value is 6x, the b value is 1. So that factors into 6x minus 1, and then um, 6x plus one like that. So that's what this factors into. And then part F, what it is, is basically this, but flipped around. So notice we got the one over here, and then we have a minus 36 X squared. Right? So notice the X squared was always in front here. Here it's over here at the end, but not a big deal. Same exact thing. We can just take this and rewrite it as one squared minus six x squared, right? So one squared minus six x squared. And so now in this case, the a value is one, the b value is six x. And so this would factor into one minus six x, one plus six x. Another thing you can do, um, you may actually see this sometimes as maybe an answer given in a textbook, is if you want to keep it in this format where that x squared is going to be in front, if we got a 1 minus 36 x squared, what you can do if you want to put it in front uh, is you could take out a negative 1 from here. You could factor out a negative 1, so then you'd end up with negative 1 plus 36 x squared. And so that's the same. We could just flip these. It would be 36 x squared minus 1 like that. Uh, and then we know that this, right, which is exactly the same as this, factors into these two brackets. So you'd end up with negative 6x minus 1, 6x plus 1. Okay, if you want to maintain that same format, you could take out a negative 1 initially, and then you get it in that format. So these two brackets, and then these three factors, this negative 1, and then these two brackets, it's the exact same thing. If you were to expand this, if you were to expand this, you'd still end up with that. Okay, and sometimes you'll see solutions given like this, but if you factored it like this, this is not incorrect uh, because both of these are the same thing. All right, so just wanted to give a heads up with, uh, with that. So what you wanna do with these, always check for a greatest common factor and then take the expression, try to rewrite in this format, see what the A value is, what the B value is, and then just plug it into that formula.